let's talk about the period, last transformation. Now, you may have noticed already that the rest of these numbers, we kind of just copy and paste from the equation. There's a 2 here, so this is a 2. This is a 1, so this is a 1. This is a pi thirds, this is a pi thirds. The period is the only one where that's different. It's a 1 here in the equation, but the period is 2 pi. That is actually because these are technically two different things. The number in the equation is called the frequency. It's basically telling you how many waves will fit in the regular 2 pi period. So if you look at these ones, this is saying two waves are going to fit in the 2 pi period. This is saying a half of a wave will fit in the 2 pi period. So that's your frequency. The frequency is the number in the equation. Now, to get from the frequency to the actual period, we do this equation. We do 2 pi divided by the number in the equation. Basically, this is 2 pi over your frequency, over the number in the equation. And that gives you how long your wave should be. So for this one, if I have two waves that will fit in 2 pi, I do 2 pi divided by that 2, and that tells me that each wave is going to be pi long. So now, instead of my box being 2 pi long, I only need the box to be pi long. So let's go through and graph this one. Amplitude, there's no number multiplying in front, so it's a 1. Vertical shift is adding outside. There's none of that this time. And phase shift is adding inside. There's none of that this time. And finally, this is a sine wave. So let's start with our vertical shift, none, so that's on the x-axis. Amplitude is still up 1, down 1. Phase shift is none, so that's on the y-axis. And this time I want my period to be pi long. So I'm going to do pi halves and pi. And now my box is only pi wide instead of 2 pi wide. And I need to fit the whole sine wave in this box. So sine starts at the middle, goes to the top, back to the middle, down to the bottom, back to the middle. Notice I still split it into fourths to make my points accurate. And there's our sine wave. Now we always need at least two waves, so that means I need to do another pi. Now I've been doing, all, or sorry, another wave, another pi long. I've been doing them all to this side, but you don't need to. So this time, since we have the space over here, let's do another wave this direction. So this would be 3 pi halves. This would be 2 pi. That would be another wave. And go to the top, middle, bottom, middle. There's another sine wave. So that's how you deal with the period. You take the number inside, which is called the frequency, and you always do 2 pi divided by that number. 2 pi divided by the frequency, and that gives you how long your box should be, the period of the function. So knowing that, I would like you to try this one. List all four things. Don't forget for the period, we'll do 2 pi over the frequency, or the number in here, which is 1 half. Simplify that out to figure out how long the wave is, find all the rest of the things, and then try to graph it. Let's see how you did. Amplitude is a secret one in front. Vertical shift, there is none. Phase shift, there is none. And we already said my period is 2 pi over the frequency, which is 1 half. So I do keep switch flip to get 2 pi times 2 over 1, which gives me 4 pi long. So notice on my tick marks, I went out to 4 pi this time. So my box is 4 pi long. And I fit my cosine shape to that box. And then I did another 4 pi on the other side so I could get a second wave. 
And that is how you deal with the frequency and the period of the graph. In the next video, we're going to put it all together and have all four transformations. I'll see you there.